Do you buy vinyl? Hey, this is Corin Tucker from Filthy Friends. Hi, I'm Peter Buck of Filthy Friends. I'm Scott McCoy. I'm Kurt Block. And we're playing What's in My Bag. <laughs> I'll go first. I got the new Solange record. A seat at the table. Well, it's like in the sky. Sometimes I don't want to feel those metal She actually started her tour in Portland. It was great. I didn't know what to expect. I hadn't listened to her other record. The presentation was really spare in a way that I really appreciated. Everyone was dressed almost primly, conservatively, in a monotone. The lights were just one orange color. Like it was really unified in this way that made the music come out really strongly. And what she had to say was front and center. Really interesting, really thought provoking and really moving at the same time. Well, okay. You got a lot of stuff there. I know, I'm gonna make you carry it on the plane. Oh, good. So, Gal Costa, she's Brazilian Tropicalia movement. This is with Cateno Filosa. I don't know how to say it. Meu coração vagabundo quer guardar o mundo So all this stuff is being reissued because people are starting to, I think, kind of tune into the fact that there was a revolution that occurred that was similar but way different to psychedelic music in South America when it was, you know, they might throw you in jail in America for smoking pot, but they'd kill you down there for, for breaking the cultural norms. So it, this is really exciting stuff for me. Also, it's in Portuguese. My wife speaks Portuguese, so she could translate it. Good to be back at, at Amoeba. This is what I've been listening to just nonstop for this whole, the last year, basically. Oh, it's lonely. He went and just recorded songs from his entire career just by himself on piano. There's like four volumes of it, and this is the whole box set. Just hearing him do them by himself and realizing what an amazing piano player he is, and you just really focus on the song. Because, you know, some of the records he made in the 80s and 90s and stuff, the production gets a little bit maybe a little too modern sometimes and stuff. And to, to hear the- Intrusive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and to hear the songs just stripped down like he wrote them, it's just phenomenal. I mean, I don't know if there's a greater songwriter who's ever lived, so hardly recommend it. <laughs> Melvin? Yeah. Maybe not their new record, but probably the one from before that. I remember just Christmas listening stuff. to the Melvins in our in the Young Fresh Fellows band driving to LA actually. Was, was that perfect. after we did that show in, in Santa Barbara? Santa and wow. Yeah. I think there was I some woke up in tripping going going on. <laughs> I woke too. up in our friend's garden the next morning <laughs> with my head on a stone, broken beer bottles all over the yeah. place and totally drawn on in uh, in felt pants. I blame it on the Melvins. <laughs> <laughs> I also grabbed the Miseducation of Lauren Hill on vinyl. Girls, you know you better watch out. Some guys, some girls are on me. All that, that thing, that thing, that thing. The doo-wop song that where she's got, got that chorus, you know, it's just such a great song. Everything is Everything is also a really great one, too. It's a cool record. I think I'm the only person on earth who likes the unplugged record. It's really raw and it's really scary. I'm telling you it's possible. I'm telling you it's possible. I mean, it's, it's so emotionally intense, you can't really listen to it all the way through. But man, whatever's going on with her is real, you know? And she hasn't really done anything since, so I wish she'd get back into it if she so desires. Freddie King, Texas Oil. I, Freddie King was a great guitar player. I saw him play back in the 70s. 
He seemed to be about eight feet tall, but maybe that's because his hair was kind of sticking. He was a big guy. This is his early singles on, on Federal, which I've, n I've never even seen any of them. He was kind of influential on like all the surf guys. He has a song called San Jose that pretty much every white kid with a Pendleton shirt in California started playing. The surf music is like, okay, Dick Dale, he's like Armenian or something, so he's got all those scales, and the white kids pick that up, and they don't know what they're doing. And then they think Freddie King is a surf artist, so they start doing Freddie King riffs, which is super cool. Okay, well this is a band called La Luz. No. really kind of um, surfy, a lot of instrumental um, stuff, but then all four of them sing, and so all of a sudden they'll do stuff that's almost like a girl group, you know? They're just a really incredible band, great musicians, great singers, and um, really cool, cool music. Spirit, oh, yeah. album I've never owned. Really? Yep, that surprises me. Enough. Great album title, 12 Dreams of Dr. Yeah. Sardonicus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Skin, yeah. kill it. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Good. The Last Poets. I love these guys. A friend of mine was a sound guy for Herbie Hancock in 1976, and Gil Scott Heron opened up. Gil Scott Heron blew my mind. You know, he's a poet, but he had a backing band. And I was like, wow, what is that? I mean, you know, it was kind of, it was proto-rap. You know, he was talking, rapping, more singing than these guys. And I kind of went and bought a couple of his records, and someone goes, well, you might like these Last Poet guys. And Last Poets are radical. Not a revolution until you are willing to eat rats to survive. When the revolution comes. When the revolution comes. It's a lot of really super strong, straightforward political stuff, chanting, yelling. This is kind of like the guy on the bus leaning into your ear and telling you what the, what the shit is. And this is really it. So these guys, you know, they should be statues of these guys everywhere. You know. um, unbelievable group. Speaking of poets that made records, I bought this Leonard Cohen, New Skin for the Old Ceremony. It's got Chelsea Hotel Number 2 on it. I need you. I don't need you, I need you, I don't need you, and all of that jiving around. It's just really magical the way that he put things together. His songs unfold differently each time I listen to them. The words he used were just really searing, you know, like they have a lot of different meanings, so. I'm excited for this one. I live in Portland now, and this is kind of the legendary band from Portland along with the Wipers. I absolutely love Dead Moon, they're phenomenal. I had never heard of this record. This is a recorded live at the X-Ray Cafe, which was an all-ages place in Portland in the like late 80s and early 90s. It's okay, it's okay. It says it's from the original eight track recording, so it might sound really good, which is never a guarantee with a Dead Moon record. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, they sound great in, in their way, but I'm really looking forward to hearing what uh, this sounds like. This is a compilation of Bowie singles. Need to have these and and have them in the house and make sure the kids hear them. Incredible songwriter and we'll miss him terribly. That's the only current record I'm purchasing. Chicano Batman. And I hear they did an in-store here. Somebody recommended these guys or I just mentioned them. I went, well, that's such a good name. I mean, Chicano Batman. I mean, I, so I went on YouTube. They have these unbelievable videos. It's kind of, oh, how would you describe it? Uh, like funk with surf music. Uh, I don't know what you describe. It. I just like the fact that they're doing something really kind of cool and weird and, you know, I'm sure these guys could probably have a career as more pop songwriters who go real hip hop or get a remix by a famous remix artist or collaborate with a, you know, how that crap works. 
and instead they're doing what they're doing, and they're, it's pretty cool. All right, I only got one more here. Oh, this is a new record called Casey and Clayton. Keep your thoughts to yourself and you'll be fine. Don't let them sit right I'd seen them live before, but just as a duo, and this is a has a rhythm section. She's an incredible singer, and he's an amazing guitar player. It also harkens back to sort of Fairport Convention kind of thing, but it's a little more stripped down and uh, spooky. It's phenomenal. That's all that I have in my trick bag. What record excursion would would be complete without a GBV record? All right, cool. Another one I don't have. I mean, I Probably know. not too many people have all the GBV records, but uh, name a bad one. <laughs> No. no? I'll, I'll kill it. The double album was the 100th, right? I think that was supposed to be yeah, the 100th. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So 101 is freshly out. Yeah. But, um, but I take a step back a few years. So this was a dollar, and it's A, got a great cover, but the, the Paul Mariette version of Love is Blue is unbelievably great, and it's been sampled, I think, by a bunch of hip-hop guys. What you talk about, Willis? Who the illness? You know, my name is Adam, stop calling me Phyllis. This is the kind of crap my parents listen to. At the time, you know, I was like, man, it isn't the Beatles, and it isn't, you know, Led Zeppelin or whatever, this is crap. But as you get older, you realize how great the arrangements are, you know? I mean, no one's writing songs. It's just all taking top 40 singles and trying to put a really interesting spin on them. This will go really well on the wall, too. You know, if you, you put the cover up. And I was going to put it back, and Corinne goes, it's a dollar. Went, yeah, what the hell? <laughs> so she's going to carry it for me. <laughs> you like this on the airplane. Back, break your truck. 